Hello and welcome to the Monster Sanctuary Tournament Circuit. Today we're going to be casting the semi-final match of the third tournament of Season 1, United Nations. I'm Jagomu. And I'm Red. So today we have a match between Aaron Crane and Dosekis. And I think uh, it's going to be an interesting match because those are two very different teams. Uh, we have Aaron Crane, which is uh, which plays a very aggressive team, big damage, uh, even outrageous damage, I should say. And uh, those those team, which is planning to not attack at all, in fact, yeah. Well, he does have that that worm on the back line, oh. which <laughs> I had the it was now coming in in the uh, the second turn here, so I actually got to see a worm C play. Uh, in in my journey through, oh yeah, the, the, so... the bracket. It's 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 that obvious monster that doesn't share a type. It's just a worm. It doesn't share a type with anything else in the game. So it's kind of free to include in those teams that players uh, may have an extra slot, especially around on the sideboard. But not many people actually have a build ready to go for for worm. And it's interesting seeing people interested and eager to bring uh, bring the worm to the front line. Yeah, well, it's like we said, it was pretty effective against Gel, and uh, here we see uh, those changing uh, things up. Uh, this time, bringing the light King Blub, uh, so he can, you know, maybe get a little more aggressive to match up uh, Aaron Crane's uh, team speed. And yeah, uh, Thornish, Thornish did just go down. Thornish, uh, renowned for being incredibly tanky, uh, but is as tanky as the opponents have debuffs, and not a lot of debuff stacks getting up on the other team, although he was able to take down the Vert with the Worm, which is pretty nice. Usually Vert is, is a quite tanky monster. It's built for that inevitability. It's built for the long game, not the the super aggressive uh, builds of other DPS. Yeah, and uh, it's it's also a very important monster to, to take down as soon as possible, because... Uh, it it only it only gets tankier and uh, as time goes by it's also it also ramp up uh, charge stacks and eventually can wipe the whole team so anyone that's faced down a vertrag has had that that creeping dread of that gravity oh, yeah. just just to turn away is this the turn is this the turn that they're going to pull the trigger so yeah. it's yeah it's i'm sure Dosaki, sigh of relief to, to get rid of the, the vert before it can Oh, and now we see here the, the Goblin Miner saving maybe the the Dracogran on uh, Heron's side, which is which is huge because uh, it was Heron's last uh, damage dealer. Yeah, it, it would be interesting to see how they could turn the corner without the Dracogran. Dracogran really being the only source of damage. The Miner does have some inevitability with charge stacks. It can get some big attacks every once in a while, but mm -hmm. nothing as consistent as, as the Dragon Grand for sure. Doseki's sticking it out though. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really have the damage on the Oculus to to, to make it there. So on to game two. Yeah, pretty fast, really game, fast game one. Yep. Yeah. All right, same lineups for both players. Those uh, might try to get a turn one kill with Worm again. And yeah, those are big damages. And managed to get it with a poison. That's nice for him. Wow. Yeah, this time, Dosaki's bringing the Worm out for that really quick kill. So mechanically, Worm is probably one of the highest variance damage dealers in the game with a large number of high risk, high reward uh, forms of, of damage increases through chances to, to do super crits. Here it's funny to see the Dracogren going through the the worm even with uh, a resistance. Uh, it's, it's it's a rare sight, you know, uh, seeing a monster just uh, one-shotting uh, uh, a, a monster that resistance to his, uh, its attack. But you know, I'm sure I'm sure Dozakis is is more than happy to have traded that worm for such a high value target like the gel. To be able yeah. to just first turn, pop the gel, don't have to worry about it. That Dracker game can come in, kill the worm, no problem. It's done its job. It can go it can go to the board happy. Yep. Although now the Mad Lord might go down. That's a oh. big fire breath from the Dracker Grant. Dracker Grant has been really surprising. I think it's one of those DPS that kind of fits into a little more flexible of a slot, uh, mm -hmm. which is the dragons and the reptiles. And 
really impressing people at really how flexible and how good of a DPS Dracogran can be uh, compared to some alternatives, which may not see standard play because it's not technically optimal, but still has, has a lot of, uh, of power in both of the double health overload to be really tanky, but also have really high crit damage and a lot of skills that, that have that bonus uh, crit damage inherent to them. So with, with these these teams that can really scale and boost that crit, get multiple glories, um, th that really can push Drac again over the top. And digging through the, the Thornish again as well, having that, that, that air attack. Wow, wow, yeah. there there we go. Popping, popping that easy. On to game three. Again. So so quick, we can't uh, we can't uh, have the time to you know comment everything on there. But uh, yeah, those uh, those are pretty fast games. It's uh, it's nice to see you know uh, that change of pace uh, on those side and um, you know uh, uh, on the on Taipachi's match, both team were you know very slow, very uh, uh, going going late on uh, with many infinity stacks, and now it's just full damage. Yeah, it's interesting to see Heron's and Dozeki's takes on on these hyper aggressive teams. I don't know if I don't know if Heron would agree calling his team hyper aggressive, but I think having a lot of oh, eggs yeah. in single baskets for for really just being able to pick, swap, team wipe, right? The, these these teams really have quite high damage potential, and I think I think it's fair to see these these trading back and forth team wipes because. That's what these teams are built to do. They're built mm -hmm. to be really frail, but be able to punch out this insane damage. And they're both falling susceptible to their own their own frailty. Dracogun really impressive at being able to consistently pick that Thornish. Yeah. Uh, Thornish for for those that are uh, that are slogging through the standard ladder and running into lots of Thornishes. Maybe Dracogran is is showing its 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 metal as something that can break up these these top lines. Mm, that's true. Now our drag already at fifty five stacks. We'll see if uh, if he'll be able to get a white. Well, yeah, that's some big previews. And wow, There's triple the big kill. wipe. There we go. So that's the the end. A quick three zero from Heron Crane. Um, pretty, pretty good, good match. I think. I think both of those teams are really high risk, high reward, really volatile, and I think the resiliency of of Heron's team was really able to to stop the pressure through either a lucky PA um, from from the gel or just the tankiness of of the Grand being able to kind of turn the tides in his favor and get that one extra kill or one extra wipe. Yeah, and I also really like to see those uh, switching things up with his team, and uh, you know, bringing bringing uh, some uh, some meme value too with the worm, and uh, you know, the Yaoi. We didn't see the Yaoi in this game, but uh, uh, the, the his team was was pretty, you know, original, and it's it's fun to see uh, to see um, a team like this going that far in the tournament. So definitely, we definitely have to give uh, credits to uh, to those two. So, All right. exciting match. Thanks for watching. Uh, we have Heron moving on to the finals. Go check out the other semis match to see who Heron's up against. Very excited to see how Heron does in the finals of this. See you in the next one, guys.